So this is the first lecture in chapter 3. Um, in chapter 3 I will show you how you can use Excel uh, and an add-in in Excel called uh, Excel Solver uh, to solve optimization problems, linear optimization problems in particular. So if you remember um, we, we solved um, in the chapter 2 the Blue Ridge Hot Tabs problem and the problem looked like this, right? Uh, for this problem we created a model and if you remember the problem here was to decide how many aqua spa and how many hydrolux hot tubs to produce s in order to maximize the total profit while we, we, we respect certain constraints on resources three resources were pumps, labor hours and feet of tubing and there was of course non-negativity restrictions so now I will move to Excel. I opened here an Excel spreadsheet. I just keep here this model so that we remember what we're optimizing. Uh, and what we will do now is we will um, implement the same model, this mathematical model, in Excel and then we will try to find an optimal solution using uh, Excel Solver for this model uh, instead of using the graphical method that we used in Chapter 2. So how do we approach this? Uh, first of all, when you define a model, you have to create spaces for your decision variables. So we have here x1, number of aqua spas, and x2, number of hydroluxes, right? Uh, I'm going to put here first labels for those variables. I will say aqua spa. I will also say x1, that's variable x1, right? So this is my number of aqua spas label, and there is hydro lux that will be for x2 now this is just labels the actual variables will be here below the labels right there will be the value for x1 there will be the value if for example it says 5 it will mean this is 5 aqua spas we want to produce right but i want to i don't want to enter these values because it's not up to me to solve the problem it's up to the the solver the the excel solver adding to find these values so i want to keep them empty and uh, just to indicate uh, that these are decision variables I will um, mark them with a color I will always use the yellow color for variables so just uh, remember about this and I will also say that in this row under those labels I have um, units to produce right so I have space for variables whatever will be here will be the number uh, that x1 is equal to and this is number x1, x2 is equal to now what we need to do also is we need to implement all the formulas that are in this model. We need to implement something that will compute for us the total profit and we need to implement something that will compute for us the number of pumps, labor hours and, and uh, the number of feet of tubing that is used by this production, right? We need to implement these formulas before we start solving the problem in Excel. So how can we do this? Uh, well. You, you might be tempted to say uh, something like this equals and then put 350 times and then select this variable plus 300 times and select this variable right this is exactly implemented 350 times x1 plus 300 times x2 if I press enter this is actually going to compute the profit for example look at this if I produce one unit here I have 350 dollars of profit and that empty means zero so this is the same as having zero if I produce two extra I will have 950 dollars of profit you can check this is correctly calculating a profit from one aqua spa and two hydroluxes now however the problem with this kind of formula that you can see here right is that it hides the numbers inside the formula so now when I look at it just now right I don't see what the unit profit for aqua spa is so this is not the best way the better way uh, to put this is to just say here I will have a line for profit in dollars but I will put first unit profit and under aqua spa I will put 350 I'm deleting the formula 350 because there is 350 dollars for every aqua spa and I will put 300 because I get 300 for every hydrolux correct so um, so now when I put these numbers, I am going here to calculate, I will call it total, right? Let me center this. T 
total, I will put a formula here that will calculate the profit. And again, I can put now 350 times x1 plus 300 times x2, but now instead of putting the numbers in the formula, I can just put them as references. So I will say this times this plus this times this. And that's a good formula. I can use that. And if you like, you can use this. Oops, sorry. Mistake. So uh, as you can see, it still calculates $950 of profit. That should be, that is correct, right? Uh, however, I, I think that there is a better function to write uh, here. And I'm going to show you again for educational purposes. Imagine I have not two variables, but I have 10 variables and I have 10 unit profit values, right? It would take me a long time. Yeah, we have to write plus another profit times another variable and so on. It would take me a long time. How can I uh, do it faster? Well, I can do it faster by using a function which is called sum product. Okay, a sum product function. This is the most useful function in linear programming because what it does is if you select the array with parameters and then put comma and then select an array with variables okay then you're going to have the same calculation as we did before which is you will get each each value in the first array will be multiplied by each value of the second array and everything all these products will be added that's why it is called sum product right there's one more thing that i suggest you do when you select this when you select the variables just after you selected the variables press f4 f4 key on the keyboard it is going to change the references from those that uh, that when you move the keep relative to the to the cell to the absolute uh, uh, references dollars dollars basically when you put dollar in front of b dollar in front of two in front of c in front of two it fixes the reference when we copy or uh, when you copy it or uh, to, to other cells it stays b whereas this one is going to change to for example b5 when you when we go down right you'll see how this works and why i'm putting this so that let's see if that still works i close the parenthesis and i have now total value which is 950 still the, the correct profit calculation we can try another test one one 650, 12950, it is calculating correctly. Uh, one more thing is I'm going to use a green color for all the formulas so that you know that there is a formula here rather than this than a number, right? 300 is just a number, there is no formula here. This is a formula, some product, so I will indicate by green color that there is a formula hidden behind this number. So we did the calculation for the objective function, we computed the profit. Now what we need is also compute the left hand sides of all the constraints which indicate the number of used pumps, labor hours and feet of tubing. So I will do this in the following three lines. I will put here pumps, labor hours and then uh, feet of tubing. Now we will notice that all those functions, if you ignore the less than or equal and then the following number, all those three functions follow the same format. They are parameter times x1 plus parameter times x2. And of course, in this case, this is 1 times x1, 1 times x2. So I can use the same format as for the profit function and use the sum product to calculate the total values here. So what, what parameters should I put for pumps? It's one pump for every aqua spa and one pump for every hydrolux. For labor hours, it's 9 and 6 and for feet of tubing 12 and 16 right and then the nice thing is of course i could start typing some product here but if there is an easier way i can just copy this formula because this is the same some product except that when i when i copy it i'd like to have the the parameters change according to which line i am in but the variables should stay the same right and this is exactly the function of not using dollars here when we copy it down we will get um, the same the same the, sorry we will get the, the parameters will change when we move to the next and the following rows and then uh, the dollars here will make sure that the variables do not change the, the references to variables do not change so what i'm going to do is uh, by the way I, when i do this i'm pressing f2 to uh, to show uh, the formula to edit the formula right of course i'm pressing escape then not to actually edit it so now i will copy and I'm going to paste it here and notice there are calculations here already available and we can test them we can see 
that this is actually calculating a correct sum product 1 times x1 plus 1 times x2 I can go here and see this is 9 times x1 plus 6 times x2 and I can see here it is 12 times x1 16 times x2 right so you can verify that this is actually the correct number of pumps one high aqua spa two hydroluxes use three pumps in total that is correct and then we can verify the remaining labor hours and feet of tubing I believe they are correctly calculated right now right so what is still missing what is still missing is that we want those total values for resources those three except for profit we want them to be limited right by some available available uh, numbers and I will call this right hand side in this case this is the number of units available but in general this could be whatever number on the right hand side of the constraint so I'll call it right hand side and then we have in the constraints 200 pumps so I'm going to put here there is two 200 pumps there is 1566 labor hours and 2880 feet of tubing and that is that is the model uh, that is the end of implementing the model in Excel now the in the in the next episode I will show you for this particular model how to uh, solve it using Excel solver add-in so what to do now to get an actual solution here